welcome back students welcome to my youtube channel your digital classroom where you'll get the necessary help for your total english text grammar writing and spoken english all in one today we are going to start a new topic the most difficult topic in english prepositions in english i said it is the most difficult topic because most of them are used in various situations with various meanings it is very difficult to bind them with the rules and regulations though the grammarians are constantly trying to formulate them as far as possible as prepositions are the part and parcel of english language english grammar but if you follow the lessons regularly with all your patience it will be easier for you it's a big topic so i'll discuss this topic in two or three parts subscribe to the channel for every part of this lesson as well as other lessons you must not miss a single part so our day's lesson is preparations in english part one introduction and definition classification and explanation you have already got the introduction from which you have got the basic concept of the importance of learning preparations in English. Without preparation, English writing and English speaking is almost impossible. Now see the definition. So what is a preparation? A very, very important question. You must have a clear concept about a preparation. Unless you have the clear concept, it will be very difficult for you to use the preparation correctly in the correct place at the correct time. So what is a preparation? A preparation is a word or a group of words which is used before a noun or a pronoun to connect it with the rest of the sentence. Now see the examples. The first one, they are reading in the room. Second one, keep it on the table. And the third one, we are running after him. In the definition, it is said that preparation is a word or group of words that is used before a noun or a pronoun. See the example here, in is used before the noun, the room, to connect this noun with the rest of this sentence. So it's a preparation. They are reading in the room. Next one, keep it on the table. On the table, you know, is a noun and it is used before this noun to connect it with the rest of the sentence. So on is a preparation here. So keep it on the table. And number three, we are running after him. Him, you know, is a pronoun and here after is used before it to connect it with the rest of the sentence so here in these three examples we have got three preparations number one in number two on and number three after now there is a question is it a preparation or an adverb sometimes you may be confused about the state of a word in a sentence. You cannot understand if it is a preparation or an adverb. To remove the confusion, try to remember that a word is a preparation when it connects a noun or a pronoun with the rest of the sentence. You have learnt in the definition. So, when a word connects a noun or a pronoun with the rest of the sentence it is called a preparation but when it is used like an adverb to denote a position then it is an adverb and in that case there will be no noun or pronoun after it to connect it with the rest of the sentence now you see the example then your idea will be clear see the first example they are in the room as per definition you have got here the noun and in is used here before the noun to connect this noun with the rest of the sentence so in here is a preparation but see the second example they came in see after in there is no noun or pronoun no noun or pronoun so it is not a preparation it just indicates a place or position they came 
in that means they came inside so here in is an adverb the same word it is used here as a preparation and here it is used as an adverb after this discussion i think we will never have any confusion over whether it is a preparation or it is an adverb now classification classification of preparations preparations are broadly and generally classified into two groups number one free preparations and number two fixed or appropriate preparations now free preparations what do you mean by free preparations they are free when two or more preparations can be used in the same place and give the same meaning see the examples then your idea will be clear see the first example they live beside the river and see the second example they live by the river beside the river and by the river at the same in meaning so this preparation can be replaced by this preparation so to give the same meaning you can use either beside or by because they are free preparations so free preparations are those preparation which can be replaced by other preparation without changing the meaning okay now see fixed or appropriate preparations some places are there in english where some fixed preparations are used see the examples he was absent from the meeting and the second example add this to that here from and to these two preparations are fixed preparation you cannot change them with any other preparation you may change it but the meaning will not remain the same the meaning will be changed for this they are called fixed preparations or appropriate preparations so you must learn well which preparations are free preparations and which preparations are appropriate or fixed preparations for the perfection of your learning otherwise you cannot use them at the right place properly now classification of free preparations free preparations are broadly classified into four groups number one simple preparations number two compound preparation and number three participle preparations and number four disguised preparations now see the examples first one simple preparations you know on into of etc these are called simple preparations or single preparations and number two compound preparations compound preparations are also called group preparations see they are used in a group instead of a group of words used as a preparation in spite of a group of words compound preparations on account of by dint of etc these are the few examples of compound preparations or group preparations now participle preparations see these two examples then your idea will be clear number one i do not know anything regarding it regarding is you know regarding you know is a present participle regarding means here about so regarding this present participle is being used here as a preparation to connect this it with the rest of this sentence so i do not know anything regarding it regarding is a preparation present participle and here the same case past is the past participle the river flows past the village these are the two examples of the participle preparations in english now number four disguised preparation see the example then your idea about the disguised preparations will be clear he comes here twice a week here a is not an indefinite article here a is a shortened form of on it is called a disguised preparation so is the case with a head a is the disguised preparation at the beginning of a head a sleep a hunting a political these are the few examples of the disguised preparations in english
So up to this you have got the definition of prepositions and how the same word is used both as a preposition and as an adverb and the broad classification of the preparations and the classification of the simple preparation these four things now we'll see the preparations alphabetically i have collected the preparation in one place for you so that you can revise them easily and quickly now see the preparations beginning with a about above across after against along amidst among around at here you are introduced to them only in the next parts i'll discuss how they are used in different contexts with different meanings about means the book is about hunting above the balloon is hanging above the table across there's a breeze across the river five comes after four against i have nothing to say against him along they are walking along the road amidst he lives amidst the animals among divide the suite among the boys among the students around the earth moves around the sun at look at the clock these are the simple uses of these preparations in the next parts of the lesson we'll discuss how these preparations can be used in different contexts with different meanings now preparations beginning with b the first one before behind below beneath beside besides between betwixt but beyond by these are the preparations that begin with b in our next lessons we'll see how they are used in different contexts with different meanings okay now see this preparation it begins with d during very important preparation you must keep it carefully in your memory then you can use it when it is necessary now see these preparations that begin with f so preparations beginning with f we have got two here number one for and number two from these two preparations are frequently used in english language preparations beginning with i we have got three preparations here number one in number two into and number three inside these are the very very important preparations you must keep them very carefully in your memory these preparations begin with o so preparations beginning with o here we have got one two three four and five number one ob number two of it is ob ob like this ob and it is o f f for sound it is bo sound ob of on out of over these five preparations are very very important remember them here we have got two preparations one begins with r and the other one begins with s the first one is round and second one is since now here preparations beginning with t you have got three preparations one is two and the second one is two words or two word these three preparations begin with t now preparations beginning with u see number one under number two underneath number three up and number four upon these four preparations are very very important and they are frequently used in english language now preparations beginning with w see we have got three preparations here number one with number two within and number three without these three preparations are also very very important preparations so today you got the introduction definition classification and a slight explanation in the next parts i'll show you how these preparations are used in english and how you can easily learn them how you can easily keep them in your memory so you must not miss all these lessons so don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell share the video with your friends and classmates 
for group discussion. Thank you for your patience and participation. More lessons are coming shortly. So stay attached. Stay tuned. See you soon.